So we've talked about these different components of executive function. We've talked about the different kinds of accommodations that you put in place if your kid has trouble with these areas. Um, and we've talked about the universal accommodations, like the, pop, the parades, right? Now, I wanna talk about the fact that we've been sort of circling around, which is if you have not very good executive functions, you are much more vulnerable to getting overloaded or overwhelmed, okay? And what that means, and this is from Brenda Smith-Miles, is that you can get into, here she's calling it a rage stage. It's not always rage for kids. It can be the blank stare stage. It can be the I'm an anxious puddle on the floor stage. But it's a dysfunctional stage of functioning. We all have this, all of us, right? This is not a stage at which a person is teachable. The teachable time is way back here, right? And the person is not teachable here because they are in no condition to learn. And because guess what? The adult who's working with them, they're not doing so well either, <laughs> right? And there's actually been scientific data where you put leads on people and adults get as stressed looking as the kid at these moments. We don't wanna see the kid in distress and we wanna help them. And the first thing we think we're gonna do is go in and talk to them and try to help them feel better. It's really okay, you don't have to worry about it. It's gonna be fine, this is what we need to do, right? But we need to shut up. We need to give that kid space, and we need to recognize that they've gotten there, which means that our accommodations have failed, right? Because we were trying to keep them over here. But they will fail sometimes, and once they're here, game's up. You put that kid where they're safe, you give them what they need to calm down, and you respect the kid fact that the inflexible kid will take a long time to calm down. Somebody asked me the other night, I was at lab school, and they were like, so how long about? I was like, depends, right? An hour, two hours? It can be a long time, but you can't make it go faster. You are powerless until they come back into that teachable moment. So that's why we want to avoid that, right? Okay. Now, we've talked about our goal and we've defined executive functions and we've talked about accommodations. We have, the, I think, like 12 minutes left and I'm gonna talk about teaching these executive skills when your kid is in those teachable moments. And here what I'm talking to you about is how are you gonna bridge the dissociation between knowing and doing? This is the biggest problem that we have now in the pedagogy or the theory about how we teach executive functions. You know, we haven't done enough research, but we have a lot of books out there and a lot of study skills classes out there that would seem to indicate that if your child isn't organized or flexible, I can sit them down and say, you need a notebook and I want you to write your agenda every day and we're gonna put some color-coded pockets in there and this is what you have to do. Got it? Bye, right? Though that doesn't work. The kids know what they need to do. They don't know how to do it. So what happens is a couple things. One is we can't really teach this in a clinic and we can't really teach it even in an isolated school setting without some coordination and support from the mainstream teachers that are working with your kid. The teaching has to be embedded in the real world and it's gonna be a show, model, and coach method. And what I mean by that is I want you to stop thinking about what happens in a classroom when your kid learns how to add and subtract and start thinking about what happens when your kid is learning a sport or an instrument or to ride a bike or another skill that they learn by doing. And the first thing that you should be thinking about is the fact that when you learn those kind of skills, you, do not, you are not told what to do and you go out and do it. Somebody shows you what to do, you screw it up, they do it with you, you screw it up, they come back a week later, you've gotten a little better, but you're nowhere near playing that scale in tune or executing that layup correctly, but you, you, um, you work with the adult again. And you know, for those of you who have kids who've done these things, you'll know that it's years, right? My kids play soccer, they're doing the same drills that they did when they were little, when they're older, and they still screw up in the game. But the point is, that they are learning by doing and practicing. And nobody says that was a bad coach, right? So you can't hand over executive function information and say it's not working if you haven't done this, uh, this process that we lay out in the blue book 
um, with this visual. And we say, if you're gonna teach executive functions, the first thing you have to do is teach by doing. You're gonna do a lot of coaching. You're gonna do a lot of, uh, we'll talk about this in a minute, making the implicit explicit, and you're gonna scaffold, fade, and generalize. So, you know, when I teach you to ride that bike, I'm not gonna put you on the bike and say, bye, I'm gonna hold on to the back of the seat until you're stable, then I'm gonna fade away my support, right? If I fade it away before you're stable, it's not gonna be a good thing. Right? So uh, it's the same kind of process. We're gonna use visuals, because remember we're trying not to talk at kids. We're trying to get them engaged and give them concrete information. And I'm gonna talk to you about how we're gonna use scripts and, and uh, words, and we're gonna have fun, because people learn better when they're having fun. So using those principles, we're gonna apply them in Unstuck and on Target, we're gonna apply them to flexibility, organization, and integration skills. So in the, in the blue book, in the curriculum, they go through a series of activities. It's a cognitive behavioral intervention. And the, um, I said the blue book, I meant the big green book. In the little blue book, you're gonna learn how you support these ideas at home. And one of the first things you're gonna do is teach kids why they should be flexible. 